Hi everyone, thanks for joining us in the studio today. I hope you had a lovely week so far and we're going to have a nice relaxing hour of painting. Before I get started painting, I have chosen a little tidbit to share with you from uh, Robert Andre's The Art Spirit, which is a book that I had since my art school days and every now and then it's nice to dip into it and get some words of wisdom. So I thought I would share a little little tidbit from this. Well, maybe a little bit more than a tidbit. All right, it starts like this. I think you could have a wonderful time. It's a really wonderful time I am wishing you. Art is, he's speaking to, this is, the book is primarily notes uh, when he's speaking to his students. After art is, after all, all, only a trace, like a footprint, which shows that one has walked bravely and in great happiness. Those who live in full play of their faculties become master economists. They understand the relative value of things. Freedom can only be um, obtained through an understanding of basic order. Basic order is underlying all life. It is not to be found in the institutions men have made. Those who have lived and grown, at least to some degree, in the spirit of freedom are our creative artists. They have a wonderful time. They keep the world going. They must leave their trace in some way, paint, stone, machinery, whatever. The importance of what they do is greater than anyone estimates at the time. In fact, in a commercial world, there are thousands of lives wasted doing things not worth doing. Human spirit is sacrificed. More and more things are produced without a will in the creation, without a will, let's see, in the creation, and are consumed or used without a will in the consumption or the using. These things are dead. They pass masquerading as important while they are before us, but they pass utterly. There is nothing so important as art in the world, nothing so constructive, so life-sustaining. I would like you to go to your work with a consciousness that it is more important than any other thing that you might do. It might have no com great commercial value, but it has an inestimable, inestimable and lasting life value can't pronounce that word. People are often so affected by outside opinion that they go on to their important work half-hearted or half-ashamed. What is the use of it if you are not making money out of it is an all-too-common question. To what distinction an artist's labors are raised the moment he does not happen to make money out of them? Very false values, I say this, and I know as well as any the difficulties of making sufficient money and the necessity of making it in order to live and go on. Go to your work because it, because it is the most important living, uh, because, go to your work because it, is, because it is the most important living to you. Oh, I see what he's saying. <laughs> make, go make great things, as great as you are. Work as always as if you were a master. Expect from yourself a masterpiece. It's the wrong idea that a master is a finished person. Masters are very faulty. They haven't learned everything, and they know it. Finished persons are very common, people who are closed up, quite satisfied that there is little or, no, little or nothing more to learn. A, boy, a small boy can be a master. I've met masters now and again, some in studios, others anywhere, working on a railroad, running a boat, playing a game, selling things. Masters of such as they had. They are wonderful people to meet. Have you never met, felt yourself in the presence when with a carpenter or a gardener? When they are the right kind, they do not say, oh, I am only a carpenter or a gardener. Therefore, not too much can be expected of me. They, they say, or they seem to say, I am a carpenter. I am a gardener. These are the masters. What more could anyone be? I like your work. He's talking again to his student. I like your work, and you have only to ask I have only to ask you to go on your own interesting way with all the courage that you can muster. Just so wonderful. Chris, this is an old book, so the language is, you know, a little different than we might use these days. So I'm looking at this, trying to see the original date. Oh, 19, 1923. So, yeah. 
Can you remind everybody uh, the title? Yeah, and, uh, this is Robert Robert Henri's The Art Spirit. Yeah, here, like this. So I've seen this in lots of different um, covers, lots of different, different editions. So you might come across it and it might look quite different. But it's, it's um, yeah, it says, yeah, first published in 1923. The Art Spirit by famed artist and art teacher Robert Henri has been an important and influential guide to aspiring artists for nearly 100 years. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Born Robert Henri Kozad in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1865. Henri studied at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts in Philadelphia, the Academic Julian of Paris, Julian in Paris, and the Ecole des Beaux Arts before returning to America and eventually teaching at the Philadelphia School of Design for Women beginning in 1892. So, yeah, it's really cool. All right, so today back to pastel. That's pretty exciting. I know that um, some of you have been anxiously awaiting um, the return to pastel for a bit. Of course, we'll, we'll get back to some other mediums um, here and there. But for today, we are painting in pastel. And we're going to paint this lovely fall scene. This is outside of Telluride, Colorado, that I took this photo a number of years ago. Just beautiful. There's a lot to dig in here, the fall color. The little structure, the little barn or structure that's um, surrounded by the fall trees. And then there's a secondary structure a little further down the hill. A couple things that we want to remember. We are looking down at the building, so that's um, a little bit kind of, um, we need to be thoughtful of that for the drawing and the perspective. Um, I love the, the little hint of the lake there and that little reflection of the blue sky right 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 here in the um Bryce can you go over to the yeah oh okay yeah yeah that that little little bit of blue now a couple things that that I think are um maybe not problematic but you know I'm just anticipating kind of what I want to do here and thinking about if if there are any any things that I might think need to be resolved, um, I am not sure about including this more distant structure. I am not sure about including this pole. Sometimes a pole like that can add interest. We already have the structure, so we've got that human element in there already. So it might be neat to add the, the pole. However, I feel like the top of this pole is fairly tangent to the edge of this, uh, this grassy area. So I might either, to bring it up might be strange. It might be feel as though it's not the right scale. Same for bringing it down. So that's something to consider. I feel like this stand of trees, this grouping here is really strong. And, you know, I don't, I'm not sure about that. That, that. that feels like the kind of difficult element in the, in the piece to me. I do love the little bits of yellow in here. However, I am thinking of cropping this. I'm thinking of cropping it. And I'm also considering, and I think I want to do it, I'm making it a square rather than a rectangle and adding on to the foreground. So I think that's where I'm going to head. Um, I love squares. I think that they make for really interesting Okay. Okay. Are we streaming? Are we going? Yep, we're back. Okay. We're back. All right, we're back. Sorry. I don't, we don't know exactly know what happened. We just lost, lost the stream briefly. So, all right, let's just get started painting. So we just get over that little technical hurdle. Hopefully that will be the last for today. I'm going to put my hair up and get, get going. I hope some of you are getting to paint along today or... If you're not painting along, maybe you get to 
to um, create your own version later if you like. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start in with my my kind of go to. Let's see. So I'm gonna get a, as large a just about a square as I can get on this piece of paper. And come in just nice and loose. And one thing that you can do, um, I do want the, that lake to lie flat. And so one thing that you can do if you if you're if you don't want to use make a ruled line, one little trick is you can put some little dots and then you can draw the line, just use those as kind of guides and you can draw the line like that. So so maybe a little bit more natural than ruling the line. There's my little lake shape. I want my trees to break the, the top of this shape, so I just want to give an idea of their height here. So I'm just giving myself a little um, reference point here. And, and then this one to break, making sure it breaks the plane of that little, of, that, uh, of the lake. Because I, I want all the cues that I can get for um, telling my viewer where things are sitting in the composition, nice and dark, and already go ahead and get something in for that really nice cast shadow. And so then I come over here and I, I want my, my structure to be sitting in right about here, I think. And just keeping in mind that I'm looking down at it, just in terms of the perspective. And there's a little, and this is all in shadow. I can already go ahead and get that in. There's a little pretty tree that kind of breaks that. There's some, these small ones. They're really nice. And there's this grouping right here. It already starts to have a nice flavor to it. Get that cast shadow that's stretching across like that. And then these trees that are kind of hugging the, the other side of the structure, it's nice. And there's some that are coming in front of. There's a little chimney with its cast shadow going up the building. That's a nice little touch. And then out here, a little bit in the distance, there's another tree and its cast shadow. And Yeah, sure. Um, I just. Um, oh, sorry, my mic was off. So just um, yeah, a bunch of cropping decisions. Yeah. Well, I feel like the main focus of the of the scene is right here. I kind of compressed the the little tree grouping a little bit. Um, the I want the lake in there. So I'm, I I feel like I'm I'm including the elements that are I'm most attracted to. Um, and you know that's usually what I want to do. I, the, this this point right here, and this point. So 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 here I'm right on pretty solid ground with a rule of thirds. And check that out right here. So if I look at it that way, I think it's pretty strong. Um, I don't need this cast shadow. I you know I, I, I it's easy for me to add a little more weight to this foreground. And then what happens then, I have this nice mass here, and then I have, um, you know, these. So I have a more unequal division of a space, where, whereas this all feels like too, too much the same, too equal. 
So this just switches that up, I think, nicely. and It does a good job of that. Okay, now I'm just going to get a little value in for this dark while I'm while I'm at it. So um, we'll find out later, but uh -huh. um, that little patch of bright blue in the lake, uh -huh. is that included in your crop? Yes. Cool. Right here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. I like this too. I've got plenty of space for nice uh, mark making practice. I'm just going to get some of this fall color in right off the bat. It's really fun. Um, yeah. I'm just dragging a little bit of this green in here. Just get me get me started. Now I'm thinking about that that this area back here. It's a little little bit darker, a little warmer, a little redder than that the foreground grasses, um, and it's got some really interesting color in it. Um, I think something like this is not a bad kind of place to start. Just in a just a kind of broad manner. And then um what about that foreground? It's also got a lot of really pretty color in it, um, but I'm going to start with, I think, something like that, a little bit lighter. There's some discussion in the chat about the unique challenges of downhill compositions. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's a viewpoint that's um, we often have when we're out touring about or whatever, um, but yeah, it can be. Just have to remember what's going on. I'm just going to get some color down in here. Um, I see there are some just adding a kind of mix just to get something going in here. Um, going to go ahead and get some color on that barn or that structure and um, it's it's not super bright red but it's not dull either let's see I think I don't think that that's bright enough but I'm, I'm hesitant at this point I'll go ahead and put something bright in and then I can always settle that down if I want to at a later point
Okay, now how about the roof? It's not, it's pretty bright. It, I, I, I'm not going to use white just yet. I, I might come back in with something whiter than this later, but for right now, I'm just. And I'll get my little chimney in there after. There's a little. What? Oh. No, I, I, I could be picking on that right now, but I don't want to. I'm just going to keep moving. And so some of these trees, we want to get an idea that there's a shadow side to them. Just kind of begin to, this one ha is casting a shadow on the other one. So that, that's a nice little start there. So um, Marla, um, mm -hmm. Susan chimed in to give you a little feedback. She purchased one of those Hovel pencil sharpeners a mm -hmm. couple weeks ago. And she says it was pricey, but she absolutely loves it. And oh, cool. It's, she thinks she'll be saving in the long run because you don't lose too much while sharpening the pencil. Oh, nice. OK, well, maybe that's good. Thank I you. Do, yeah. You should check it out. It's always fun to get some new, new gear. Definitely. Okay. Now, now that I've got got a pretty good start here, now I better get I better tackle the things that that scare me about this. <laughs> it doesn't scare me. I mean, it doesn't scare me. It just the things that the thing that feels hard is this in here. Not really hard. Just. seems to me a little challenging. So I want to come up with some marks that sort of emulate sort of what's going on here. I love the kind of color in between, so I'm going to try to integrate that to see. Uh, Um, let's see. It's Let me get this in. This little, and I'm just getting it in broadly. I I do want, I do like some of the detail that's on this that that shifts in color and value. And there's some idea that along here that's the edge of this lake bank. And then, let's see, what about that sky? It's sort of tempting to me to switch up the color of the sky but I think I'll leave it. Um, and I think it's fairly nice, a good thought to leave it fairly simple. It, it could be cool to put in some um, clouds, but 
one out. I think I'm going to leave it pretty simple today. And a little mix with some periwinkle blue. And then I'll come in with something even lighter in value. with that edge a bit. And that tree line. So I'm just kind of working, marrying those colors together. So we get a nice even gradation. Just pat those, fill in the tooth where I've got those negative shapes. Okay, that's starting to take shape. Pastel use, you use all kinds of brands, and um, I do. But um, I, yeah, I have, I definitely have some favorites and some go tos. But I use both hard and soft pastels. I use all different brands. Um, they all have different characteristics that you can um, use in, in your in your work. I know there there's some pastelists that really kind of stick to just a couple or even one, but I don't know, to me it just, it, it's more fun <laughs> to, to try different, try different ones and use them in different ways. So let's get this. Maybe a couple little sky holes here, here and there. Now the paper almost does what I need to do for the reflection, but here is that little bit of blue sky. Now the thing, it's, can, it's okay for it to be a little darker and a little bluer because it's, it's reflecting the zenith, which we don't really see. We're, we're, we're just beginning to see it grade eight darker. So it is okay for it to be, it makes sense for it to be a little bit darker blue. Okay, now we're rolling, I think pretty well. And now we can start playing with the, the colors here in the foreground really get this, uh, sculpt those trees, get a little bit more, some lights on the trees. I think that would be, it's time to do that. Have some fun with that. Can you talk a little bit about using black pastels? Yeah, um, uh, you mean just uh, in a monochromatic way? 
Or like, do you, you know, like sometimes there's that, that old kind of school rule that you, you want to avoid using black paint. Oh, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't think that there's any, any rules. I, I, I think you can use black. Um, you can do anything you want. Um, um, I, I really, as a, as a painter, I, I don't think that there's any rules we need to adhere to. I think there are rules of thumb that can help us out. Um, there's sort of a, a process that we can use that, you know, rather than a, I don't, I don't think of anything as a formula. I try to think of it as that I trust that process. Um, but I don't think you have to, I don't think you have to say, oh no, I can't, I shouldn't use black. I just think there are other choices that are richer and more interesting oftentimes than black. That doesn't mean you can't use black. All right, see that's starting to get some good, good form. It's neat. See this dark here under the trees. I'm using the Terry Ludwig for that dark, dark. And even that I don't want to overdo. And do you know if that's yellow number 13 that you're just using? Or? Um, no, what I had in my hand there was a, it's a blue earth and it's, it's, um, it's got a mark on it. It looks like V5 something. I'm sorry, I don't know, actually know exactly. I, 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 I don't make it a habit of, of, remembering the stick names um, because they're just, it's just too too cumbersome for me to do that um, because of all the different brands. So instead, uh, I, if I'm really wanting to keep track of something, I um, refer to, uh, I've purchased charts that are the actual um, swatches, not, not printed charts. Well, um, okay. <clears throat> Roger says hello from Tucson, Arizona. Oh, hi, Roger. And he says, how about a cactus painting next week? Um, you got a good photo. Yeah, he should provide us with a good reference photo. Cactus, cool. Cacti. We did yeah. a cactus in the, um, where did we do that? A couple of them. Uh, yeah. Maybe um, sunsets. Trees? Trees. Trees. A long time ago. Yeah, this is this is kind of fun. It's got it's got some nice stuff going on. Um, oh, I know what I want to do. The, the roof, I think it's a little more like that. Maybe.
I'm not sure I'm wild about the color of the house there. We'll see. I have to come back to that. I want to get develop the, that foreground a little bit more, and then we'll see. Just being, trying to just play around with the color here, just a little. And the, and the topography, it's kind of right here, there's a little area that kind of goes downhill and then almost as though there's a little pathway in here. I also, there's some fun cast shadows of those small trees. And I want to make sure I get those as well. And some little Right, these cast shadows, they really, the cast shadows of the trees really do help just describe the, the landscape here. It's fun. And I want to work on the on this section a little bit more too. There's there's a lot going on here actually. It's really and it's very 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 pretty. And it doesn't have to be exactly. I don't want to get the kind of that character of it. And um Even a little hint that there's a little stream running back there. There's some trees. And there's kind of really soft vegetation back there.
I'm going to get a little lighter on those distant trees also, I think. This, this I think wants to be a little lighter. Maybe a little bluer. What have I got? That'll work. Soften that up a little bit. Yeah, it's a little too strong. And as the tree line recedes, the trees are smaller, so the marks want to follow suit. I don't know if I, it's okay, kind of works. I'll play with that idea a little bit. Now that needs to go lighter now, because now that I see that, maybe even lighter than that. So there's some folks commenting on the uh, on the roof line. Uh huh. How it's um, angled a little bit differently in the um, reference photo. Yeah, I haven't finished it. Because I I was using kind of cutting into it, but um, yeah. Also, it's okay if it is. I do. I definitely want to make sure that I have that looking down at it though, and it's not quite there yet. Oops. Yeah, it's um it's more it's angled like like that. More uh, what I was trying to do was trying to pick out that porch. It's got like a little porch railing. I was trying to do that with the negative shapes, but it didn't didn't quite when I did that it kind of lost the roof line. That's what I was that's what I was going for. So I'll have to do it. I'll have to get that little porch um, like that. I think that's closer. And I also want, I'm interested in getting that little cast shadow on the edge of the roof right here. And here, but to me, that that's kind of detail that I can I can come back to at the at the end. So I'm not. I'd I'd rather concentrate on getting the whole thing working first before I address that kind of thing. Okay.
Here's a question. Mm -hmm. oh, do you ever take a photo of your painting and then the photo shows areas that you think need to be fixed? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Um, that's a really good way to make assessments of a, a piece. As it's um, you know, just just that that convention of looking through the camera lens um, just gives you that little bit of a different uh, perspective on what you're doing. Um, also, it's making it smaller, so that's simplifying it, re reducing it down is going to reveal things often. You know, there are many times I'll photograph and go, oh my gosh, I put that thing right smack in the middle, or, you know, it really <laughs> shows up something glaring. Okay, I'd, I'd really like to get the color of that house the way I want it to be. I'm not sure. Maybe this. I'm going to get that roof line. Kind of fixed. That's better. And um, now I think I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of white on that roof. It looks like it's a metal roof. And okay, now there's all kinds of there's some fun shadows here in the foreground. I'm probably going to leave that alone for now. I want to come up here and finish this. And I want to also get a little bit, some lighter lights on those trees. You want to start tapering these things? Um, it's, yeah, let me see. It's um, 12, 12 by 15 and a half is the, is the whole sheet.
Just so just kind of sculpting these trees a little bit. Really giving them that nice, strong light side, shadow side. And I'd like to do the same with those little, maybe I'm going to bring in something like this. Eh, I don't like that. I think it's too, too much, too much. So I'm going to settle that down. And I also want to lighten this. Okay, what have I got? Yeah, this, see, this, this is um, that, that part of the painting and I anticipated that that is doesn't feel quite finished to me and I, I'm confident in resolving it but I um, need to sort of work that out and that's okay. And that's just kind of a matter of to me it's a little dark and it's a little foreboding. So what can I do to pop, pop it up a little bit, punch it up a little bit? So maybe that's just being a little more playful with the color. So it's not quite such a mass, dark mass back there that's just hanging out. Yeah, that's better. That is better. Yeah, much better. All right, so along those lines. Let's lighten it up even more. Um, how about... What if... Yeah. Yeah, that's way better. So, you know, it, you think, oh, it's a gr green trees back there, but if I were to make that just d really dark green, it really wouldn't um, work. And I think that shape needs to be lighter still than I have it. So it's a good kind of lesson in, in the values. Everything's relative. So I lightened this a little bit, so then this needed to, to go lighter as well. Move one thing and everything has to move along with it.
Oh yeah, it's way better. Um, it'd be fun to get some of that color on onto that the, the slope, but not sure. Well, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens if we punch in a little bit. I don't know if I like it. Maybe. That kind of thing, you kind of either have to go for it and do it, and say it like you mean it, or you got to not do it. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah. Well, kind of made a commitment to it, so. That needs to be a little bit lighter. And so maybe this can come over here, bounce over here. It's not bad. And Maybe I want a few darks in here. Now, now it's starting to starting to work. And one, one other thing that I want to do in the sky, I, I, I would like to play a little bit with the, the grasses. I think they're really interesting. Uh, I would like to do that. I'd like to play with a little bit more color in the trees, maybe. Um, maybe add, add on to that a bit. I do like the way uh, I, I painted them pretty directly, and I like that about it. Um, one thing I have in mind is to add some light yellow in the sky, right? And uh, Marla, would you say you, you had a light touch throughout this painting? Um, not, not so much, actually. Th this painting has a little bit more um, direct approach. Uh, you know, at the beginning, yeah. There's, there's quite a bit of pigment on, on this one. You know, and sometimes, sometimes that's fun to just go ahead and pile it on. Um, 
All right, there's a couple little opportunities for like that. That's nifty. There's all kinds of things that could be played with in here, but overall, I like it. Now, this is some aqua. <laughs> which I love, and I'm just bringing some of this into the foreground, and that's doing a couple things. It's sort of blending things together a little bit. It's also echoing some of this color that's, that I've got going up here, so it helps to tie the whole thing together pretty nicely. Getting a little texture going. So there's a little discussion on the chat about color college, uh -huh. and Janet says that it's wonderful and she learns so much. Oh, okay, yay! And that is one of our workshops. Color college, lots of pretty in-depth, not pretty in-depth color theory applies to all mediums. That's one that we definitely want to come back and play with some more. Meaning there's probably going to be color college too one day. <laughs> <laughs> one there's of so these much, days. So much to learn. It's on the it's on the list. Which but the list is long cuz there's so much like like Robert Henri said, there's tons of stuff to go out and have fun with with when it comes to making art. The pastel that you're using right now, is that a hard pastel? No, this is a soft one. It's kind of a grayed uh, bluish purple, I wanna say. Yeah, see, it's it's kind of this is one that it, does it belong here? Or here, I think it kind of whoops. Oh, yeah. Does it? Where does it belong? It's kind of see. It, it could almost go over there. See, it's kind of it's pretty neutral. Could live over here. Could live here. Might. Mm, I don't know. I think it, it likes it over there for today. <laughs> I think it does. And I'm just, oh, I'm going over my time a little bit.
No, I'm, I'm just having fun now. So <laughs> that's sorry. <laughs> I'm in my own little world now. It's fun. There we go. And this building has some idea of some little kind of like that. All right. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I think I'm going to call this one good before I get too carried away on certain things with it. Um, oh, I've got, I've got one more thing I have to do. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. I didn't, I, I could have spent a little bit more time on this distant tree. I kind of left it hanging, didn't I? But I think it looks pretty good. And then this guy wants a little bit more of a cast shadow, I think. Right. All right, I think that's it for today. <laughs> I had fun, I hope you did too. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend and get to do some art, I'm planning on it. And we'll see you next week. I don't know exactly what we're gonna be doing next week, but... Um, Maybe what? Maybe, Maybe a cactus. Hopefully a cactus. <laughs> if Roger comes through. He's gonna come yep. through for us. All right, you guys, have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.